Hello and welcome to today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. I am Inkem Okwogo. The NYSC scheme was created to reconstruct, reconcile, and rebuild the country after the Nigeria Civil War. The NYSC objective of national integration can never be overemphasized. This is why prospective core members are posted to states outside of their states of origin. This is to instill in our youth the values of nationalism, patriotism, loyalty, and accountable leadership. On today's episode, we would feature three ex-core members who have integrated into their states of deployment, created businesses, and are active members of the community. Don't go anywhere. We would be right back. No palliatives in NYSC orientation camps stop attack on our facilities, said the Director General, NYSC. The Director General, National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Shwaibu Ibrahim, has appealed to people to stop the attack on NYSC orientation camps in search of palliatives. He stated this when he led the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, on inspection of the NYSC FCT orientation camp Kubwa, Abuja, vandalized by hoodlums in search of palliatives. General Ibrahim, who condemned the invasion of the camp, added that there are no palliatives in any of the NYSC orientation camps in the country, as the mandate of the NYSC scheme is to groom graduate youth to become role models and contribute their quota to the development of their fatherland and not warehousing and distribution of palliatives. He appealed to members of the public to report anyone seen with any NYSC property that was looted. President Buhari commend youth as agents of social change. President Muhammad Buhari has commended the pivotal role played by Nigerian youth as agents of social change, economic growth, and sustainable development. He said his administration believes in the Nigerian youth as they deserve recognition. President Muhammad Buhari stated this during the maiden edition of the 2020 National Youth Day celebration with the theme, Invest in the Youth, Secure Our Future held at the conference hall of the presidential villa, Abuja. He advised the youth to join his administration in meaningful dialogue in order to chart a way forward towards a positive reform needed by the police and other security services. President Buhari stated this during the maiden edition of the 2020 National Youth Day celebration with the theme, Invest in the Youth, Secure Our Future. Speaking at the event, the president affirmed his confidence in the indivisible nation and its future, adding that Nigeria has the collective ability to drive to overcome its challenges. The president also said that youth must be encouraged and groomed to take key roles in politics, business and other affairs of life. Welcome back. Our first story is an ex core member, Madwa Gunam Ephraim Undubisi, an optometrist from Anambra State who served in Kogi State and has remained in the state. He now owns and operates a thriving private medical practice. Let's take a look. Hello viewers, I hope you are enjoying the program. I'm Dr. Madaguna Ephraim Ndubisi, an ex core member from Anambra State that served in Kogi State. You can see I'm still holding my NYC certificate. So precious to me. You are welcome. I got admission into University of Benin to study optometry, which I studied for six years. And then I proceed to Lagos for my internship or housemanship, which I did for a year. That was uh, 2008. In uh, 2009, that was um, February. 
So we're called to the camp. So I was in Asaya camp. That was 2009. We stayed there for, I think, a month plus. So we're posted. So I was here in different, different towns, local government in Kogi State. Then finally, I was, put, I was sent to Lokoja, which is the state capital of Kogi State. To be precise, my place of primary assignment was Federal Medical Center, Lokoja, which I came and met some people that I've not met before. We stayed for a long time. I served well. I did my best. I tried to be friendly with people around. So after the service here, I was a locum staff for like four or five months. Within that five months, the hospital advertised, so I applied. I was taken. So that was 2010, because I passed out 2010. I was taken 2010, so I continued working with FMC. Then by 2000, and when I was confirmed, after two years I was confirmed, then I moved to start my own practice, which is where you people are now. So I started my practice, that was 2015. I started my practice as an optometrist. I practice, I've practiced now as a private practitioner for like three, four years. So I'm still in Lokoja, Kogi State. Then I equally proceed to add more feathers to my cap. And actually I'm in the college, College of Optometry, doing residency in low vision, which I'm in my finals now to defend the thesis. So my journey in Kogi State has been a beautiful one. I'm actually married with four kids. God has been faithful. And it was NYC that brought me to Kogi State. And since then, I've stayed back. And um, I've not regretted being a core member that served in Kogi State. was now having Kogi State in mind. But when the FMC job now came, I said, okay, since I'm in FMC, I have to be in this state for a while. So I got married. My wife is from my state too. So she's with me here. Yeah? And we are all together in Kogi State. I'm fulfilled. You know, and there's an, an adage in Igbo land is that uh, is the knife you have that you use to shake people. Uh, so my own knife that I have, I'm using to shake people, is okay for me. So I'm satisfied, I'm contented. At least uh, I'm working in FMC. I have a private clinic too. I have about four staffs that are working under me. And thanks to NYC. If not because of NYC, I might still be in Lagos by now. Because I knew when I wanted to go for NYC, initially I wanted to dodge the program. It was my brother that called me and I said, why not go? That you might need it tomorrow. So that's what prompted me coming to Kogi State to serve. So uh, generally I'm fulfilled. Truly remarkable how the NYSC is a catalyst to the career advancement and lifelong sustenance of core members across the country. We move to ex core member Atufe Obaru, a prolific photographer who hails from Delta State and served in Kogi State. Just like Undubisi, Obaru has found fortune in Kogi State and has established a flourishing photography studio where he has also trained seven call members and members of the community in photography. Let's go. Let's meet Obaro. My name is uh, Atufi Obaro. I am from uh, Ethiopia West, okay, Delta State. I graduated from uh, Delta State University, B.S.C. Mathematics. When I got into NYSC, first 
I met uh, Reverend Tayo. He was in charge of OBS back then. So I actually went to camp to tell you how much I love photography with my camera. They asked us not to go, to go with anything, but I couldn't leave my camera. So I went with it. So I was opportunity to meet him. I told him, this is what I do. He was like, ah, we have a place you can do this, your photography. You come and join us at OBS. So that's how the relationship started, you know. So we started covering activities in camp. NYC created that platform for me because I had easy access to core members. I had easy access to core members. And there was a time the idea also came up. Ah, this thing that they are doing, side, 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 I can do it too. <laughs> so I went back to Rentayo. He was like, ah, meet this uh, lady in charge of Mama Said. Then uh, Mama Said. So she asked me to meet meet her and I met her and she was like, ah, you can do this very well. I said, yes, it's what I've done all my life. So that's how it all started. And we started training core members, even as a core member. I was like, I've served like five months and I'm already training core members. And I didn't want to go for NYC. Even as I didn't want to go to school in the first place, because it was my uncle that told me, oh, Barry, you have to go to school, leave this business thing and go to school. So it was like my attitude. I didn't want to, what is this disturbance now? Let me just focus on this, my business, you know? But I didn't mean I didn't come. I went to know people like Mr. Moazo. He has been an amazing person. He's more than a friend. I want to know my mama here, yeah, uh, Mr. Suji, you know. I want to know my side mama. I want to know a lot of persons that have greatly impacted me. Mrs. Ifoma, my present side mama, you know. They relate with me like this is a family. It's not like I'm relating to, with my superiors. As in, we relate, we talk on all grounds, we talk about everything, and... They have really been of great help to me. I would know a lot of core members. I've, tra I've trained a lot of core members. So I've trained a whole lot of people. And they have really impacted me to see that I need to do more. It was easy for me because NYC came into four. So as I was training core members, they were coming. They were having birthdays. So even as a core member, I could recall vividly, I covered like two big weddings from referrals, from core members, you know, over two big weddings. So I would say NYC has really impacted me greatly. They didn't give me money, but they gave me something bigger than money. I got to camp on the 28th of November. Yes, I actually wanted to serve in Far North, but uh, I was supposed to go to Kogi, never knew Kogi. I got to camp and um, discover everybody how to wear white and rule and regulation, the military and the rest of that. But one thing that actually amazed me more about the whole thing that went on in camp, apart the drillings and the things that happened, is the fact that I was exposed to a dream that I've actually long time desire to always achieve in my life. I never knew anything about Saeed. When I got to camp, we talked about Saeed and what Saeed I discovered is an entrepreneurship scheme. Then I discovered there's something in part of the uh, entrepreneurship scheme, photography and cinematography. Uh, it was amazing for me because I actually study mass comm because I want to get exposed to this thing. But unfortunately, you know, they don't get deep to all these things for us in school. But coming down to camp exposed me to a, a brother, my trainer, then in camp, and that's Obaru. 
and uh, I quickly grabbed the opportunity and I, this is a big opportunity for me. This one thing I had wanted to learn for the past five years, but due to a lot of things, schools, time and money too, I was unable to learn this. I lo always loved to be a cinematographer. But knowing Obara at the camp actually exposed me to this and I quickly grabbed the opportunity. But since that time that I've been here, I'll tell you my first video I've covered wedding with him. I've, I've undo the event on my own under him. The last um, batch A uh, passing out. I covered the whole event on my own. It was amazing. <laughs> And I love it so much. One thing I just love is that NYC is doing this to me. NYC is doing this to me. It's a big thing to me. I want to say a big thank you to NYC bringing Obaro to my way. Because if not for them, Obaro won't have been a trainer at the camp. And I won't have got to meet him to learn all these things. Then I'm already a photographer. I'm already handling video editing. I've done video editing for some of my colleagues and it's amazing for me. That was exciting to watch. Keep it up, Obaro. And to all core members out there making a difference, keep the flag flying. We move on to ex core member, Appel Michael Oko, an indigene of Benway State who served in Anambra State and was offered automatic employment by the government of Anambra State for his selfless service to his host community during his service year. Ape's commitment to educational development in the state was evident in the numerous community development projects he executed in his place of primary assignment, Community Secondary School, Oka. Let us meet Ape. My name is Ape Maike Oko. I am from Benue State. I served in community secondary school, Amobia. I did many projects, among which is the best is the, the borehole which I drilled in community secondary school as one of the major needs of the community. When I came to the school, it was really a nice place. The people were wonderful, the community were wonderful. But I discovered that there were necessary needs of the community that we were lacking. I came to a place where the people themselves are good, but the students are having challenges of their practical works. Even the domestic needs of the, co of the school community and even the community at large were not met because there were no water in the school. You could see a student looking for water to drink, going down to the town to get water. Some bring water from the town, some get water in the bottle from home. When it finishes, they have no option, than, they have to go back to the town and get water. I saw it as a major need. They staff themselves when they teach, they, could not, they cannot actually wash their hand unless they buy pure water. So there are many challenges to it, even the security himself that is living in the school compound, having challenges of water to take, take his bait, cook and other things. So I saw it a necessity and I started the journey. It was really a motivation in my mind. I never saw the possibility, but I had the vision in my mind that with God is going to be possible. I, I organized music seminar, I organized student conference where I, we, we, there were a quiz competition, math English, there were also debate, which my school came first. In the mathematics competition, they came first in the debate and came second. And also I visited a prison and other project, but I missed that this very boho was the central point.
After Michael is a core member that served the, the school, he has passed out. But during his tenure, he was very useful to the school. He attracted, I just like I've said before, he attracted the powers that be in the community to construct a borehole for the school that is serving us now. He has also led students in competitions and debates and has won prizes. This same core member, because of his contribution to the school and maybe to the community in general, was offered automatic employment by that governor, Chief Dr. Willie Obiano, Aboko UDK Global. So he's now a staff of the school. After my service here, I, I engaged into teaching in a primary school, a private primary school. I was teaching for just a period of time to gather one or two things. So around August, I received a message that I that there will be a award at Equeme Square, and I am going to be one of those that will be awarded. We went there, but it happened that it were only two of us that were given the award, and I became the best copper of the year. In 1978, I was the best copper in Benway State. Wow! And I copper and. Uh, I was given a national award for being the best copper in Benue State. Today, the Benue State man is also earning the state award in Anambra State. Congratulations. I was awarded the best copper of the year. We are given laptop, a sum of 200,000. And then <clears throat> I was also given this very uh, appointment by the state government. <laughs> has rendered a great help to our students, to us who is students. So we make this bowl, we drink from it. It makes it easier for us to flush our toilets, to make our toilet to be neat. We use it to clean our, our as in mob our classes, our classrooms and others. And this has inspired me that when I am going to serve my father's land, that I'm going to do better than this. I want to use this opportunity to pray for Mr. Appel Michael for what he has done in our school. And we pray that the God Almighty will continue to bless him in everything or everything he lay his hand on. In Jesus' name. And I was very, very happy because if he didn't think about um, doing that bubble, there will be a little problem in this school because there's no water around here. The Boho project is very nice, very good, especially to the students and the teachers. I must say that as far as NYC is concerned, NYC has come to build the youth, NYC have come to develop the community, NYC have come to, to contribute to the needs of the people. I must confess that NYC is the greatest platform I've, I've ever seen. Why am I saying this? We, we, we went to the school, we were trained to become somebody. Now the NYC saw this, that if we have actually gone to the school and we have been made, there is a need for us to go into the community, different communities, to actually inspire and also bring that which we have been inculcated and that which we have learned. NYC made it possible for core members to go down there and give it their impact. And I want to say that if not for NYC, this school wouldn't have gotten this water. So it was a platform, it's like a foundation, and we have come to build on it. And I really appreciate NYC, and I always encourage every graduate to go for this program, because some persons will say the NYC is, there is no need because their eyes and their minds is focused on the finances, but actually it's not just the money, but it's about the impact. And when the impact is made, if it becomes where God will bless you, it will become your dreams actualization.
On today's episode, we have seen the contributions of core members in healthcare, education, and the creative sectors of the Nigerian economy. This is a reflection of the wider impact of the National Youth Service Corps in national integration and in the overall national development efforts. This is where we draw the curtain on today's episode of NYSC Half Hour. Thank you for staying with us. We would love to hear from you. Kindly write to us on the online handles displayed on your screens right now. And on my honor, we would write back. Remember, the safety of co members in our communities is the responsibility of you and I. Until I see you next time, I am Inkem Okwogo. Stay safe. Resumption of Orientation Program. Sequel to the announcement by the Honorable Minister for Youth and Sports, Mr. Sunday Dari, on the resumption of orientation course, management of the NYSC wishes to announce that the program shall commence across the 37 orientation camps of the scheme nationwide on Tuesday, 10 November 2020. Management urges all prospective core members to adhere strictly to the COVID-19 protocols while in camp in order to have a hitch-free orientation course. Thank you. Something.